Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Hare. Hare Rama. Hare Rama. Rama Rama. Hare Hare. First of all, I'm offering my obeisances countless times unto my most worshipful Guru Pada Padma, Paramaradya Tamasto, Tarsata Shishimaj, Labhakti Viranta, Narayanga Swami Maharaj, Lugurudev, the lotus feet of the entire Upanuga Gaudiya Guru Varga, all Vaishnavas, Vaishnavis, all assembled devotees, please accept my pranams. Hare Krishna. <clears throat> Today we are gathered here to bathe our consciousness in the glories of Radha Krishna's eternal associate, Srila Bhaktivedanta Narayanga Swami Maharaj, pure devotee, illustrious guru in our lineage coming from Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, the Brahma Madhva Gaudiya Sampradaya. We are extremely fortunate to be in this line, to have had his darshan, or to have had darshan of those who have had his darshan. Anyone here has seen Krishna? You can raise your hands. Who has seen Krishna? No one. Who has ever heard Krishna's name? Has anyone heard Krishna's name? You haven't heard Krishna's name? You're not hearing it now? Come on. You've see, heard Krishna's name? In the Bhagavatam it said that you can see Krishna by hearing his name. Maybe not at once, but by continuing to hear his name, it brings you to Darshan of Krishna. So we hear his name and we hear about him, his Kata. But if you want Krishna's Darshan, you also need one other thing. What is that? Guru Darshan. In this world, everyone is practicing some form of religion, some form of dharma, whether they know it or not. But only dharma without connection to Sadguru will not give you Krishna Darshan or Krishna Prem, love for Krishna. Anyone has pure love for Krishna? Raise your hand. Jai, Haribo. Very nice. Yes, you have? So, how do we develop love for Krishna? Our Gurudev would say, separation without meeting is not possible. So when you're separated from someone you love, you feel sadness and you want to be with them. So to develop pure love for Krishna, we have to have deep attachment for him, that when we're separated from him, we're lamenting and thinking, when will I be with Krishna? But our Gurudev would say, we have not met Krishna. So how can we feel separation from him? How can we feel attachment to him? Attachment is very important in spiritual life. The Bhagavatam 320.25 says, without attachment, you cannot advance. And in this life, we're always attached to something. We're either attached to something material, which binds us to this world, or we're, we are attached to something transcendental, which liberates us. We're always attached. This is the Sastra. We're always attached to something. So the process of spiritual life is not getting rid of attachment. It's developing attachment to that which is transcendental. And that which is transcendental is not just an energy or a consciousness, it's a personality. And we develop attachment to guru or to sadhu, then this leads us to moksha, liberation, and according to our desire and the qualification of our teacher, it can lead us to realization of pure love for Krishna in his own abode, Vrindavan, where we can have a personal relationship with him. So it is described, Mahat Sevam Dwaram Ahur Vimuktis Tamo Dwaram Joshit Sangi Sangam. By attachment to the sadhu or to guru, we achieve liberation and the lotus feet of Krishna. By attachment. And by attachment to things of this world, we remain bound in samsara. Understand? So the question is how to develop attachment to? Shri Guru and Vaishnavas, because they are the ones who have pure attachment for Krishna. That is ultimately Guru, someone who has love for Krishna, someone who is Krishna's devotee in the genuine sense. And then you develop affection for them. We always hear the importance of Sadhu Sangha. Yes, 
association with devotees. But Sangha means more than association, it means an attachment. Sadhu Sangha, Sadhu Sangha, Sarva Sastri Koi, Lava Matra, Sadhu Sangha, Sarva Siddhi Hoi. Who's heard this verse? Sadhu Sangha, Sadhu Sangha, Sarva Sastri. All the scriptures say Sadhu Sangha, Sadhu Sangha. And then again, Lava Matra, Sadhu Sangha, Sarva Siddhi Hoi. Even a momentary association with the Sadhu can give you perfection. But Sangha means association with attachment. You're always attached. Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, Dihayato Vishayan Pungsa Sangha Stehsa Upajayate. By contemplating matter and the objects of your senses, you develop attachment for them. And this leads you to bondage. That same tendency to be attached when offered to Guru and Vaishnavas, that means devotees who have love for Krishna, devotees who are on the high stage of spiritual life. That same attachment leads you beyond samsara and to the development of pure love for Krishna. So this is our first platform of understanding. Okay? How do we develop that attachment? By association, that attachment develops. So we have not met Krishna, but we have met Gurudev or Vaishnavas. This process of spiritual life is the best. There are many processes of spiritual life. And there's many ways to free yourself from obstacles. I want to read you something really quick, okay? It said that you can overcome different problems by different methods. Even though it's difficult. But the best way to overcome all problems is simply to develop attachment to Guru and Vaishnavas. That attachment to them, that love and affection to them will take you across samsara very easily. We heard last night from Mahabudi Prabhuji. He told so many sweet stories of Gurudev. And he said, I'm not so interested ultimately in just the philosophy, the tattva of Guru. I'm interested in the personality of Guru and my relationship with him, my interactions with him. And I feel separation from him and I want to be with him again. And if you can focus on that, Guru is with Krishna, but Krishna for us is far. We don't have pure love. That means... Pure love for Krishna means, Swami Prabhupada would say, you're not able to take your next breath. You feel so much longing to be with Krishna, like the gopis. One moment away from Krishna, you're in deep pains of separation. Like Radha Ji, she fainted. Where is my Krishna? Where is my Krishna? So that person who has such love for Krishna, you develop relationship with them. So it said you can overcome different obstacles. I'll read you this very quickly. It's very interesting. It's in the Bhagavatam. Narad Muni is discussing this, how to overcome problems. In life, we have so many problems, right? I'll read them quickly. You can overcome lust by determination not to enjoy your senses. You can overcome anger by renouncing desire. You can overcome greed by thinking of the trouble that all the things you accumulate bring. You can overcome fear by Knowledge, truth of what is absolute reality. You can overcome lamentation by transcendental knowledge. You can overcome pride by service to great devotees. You can overcome mental distraction by silence. You can overcome violence by renouncing desire to enjoy. You can overcome suffering from others by compassion. You can overcome suffering in your environment by concentration on God. You can overcome suffering in your own body and mind by yoga, by asana, by pranayam. You can overcome passion and ignorance by goodness, sattva. And even goodness you can overcome by nirgun, sadhan, and understanding what is nirgun. But this is very difficult. Anyone has overcome all these things by these practices? It's very difficult. So Narad Muni then says, simply by developing attachment for the lotus feet of Sri Guru, Automatically, you cross over all these things. Therefore, Sri Guru Kandari, Guru is the captain of the ship. You are on the ocean of material life. Guru is guiding us to the transcendental world. This is described in all Sastra. All obstacles are quickly and easily conquered by Guru Bhakti, those who have devotion to Guru and who take shelter of that Guru and 
have that connection. This is more powerful. We discussed this morning. The Breja Gopis, the cowherd damsels of Raj, many of them in their past life, they were the Vedas personified, Shruti Chari, Smriti Chari, Upanishad Chari, knowledge personified. But they gave up everything simply to develop attachment to the lotus feet of Krishna. And they were born in Braj. And very simply, they developed that love and attachment. So this process of bhakti is ultimately a very simple and sweet process. It's very simple and sweet. Like you have friendship and affection in your family. Like you have friendship as parents for your children. Children for your parents. Those who are truly your friends, you have affection for them. Like the affection you have for your partner. Simply you develop a similar kind of affection for Guru and Vaishnavas, knowing that they are my real friend. They are my real friend, the friend of my soul, the friend of my Atma. And you develop that affection and then you think, oh, somehow or other, let us spend some time together hearing about that which is the ultimate reality, the ultimate truth. And what do we do in that association? We chant the name of Krishna and we hear about the beauty of Krishna, his transcendental form, his transcendental qualities, his pastimes. And in this way, we come very close to Krishna. Radhe Radhe Haribo. Haribo. Okay? Very simple process. Yes? Therefore, every day we sing. Shri Guru Charane Rati Eshe Uttam Gati Je Prashade Pure Sharvayasha Je Prashade Pure Sharvayasha Chakudhana Dilo Je Janme Janme Prabhu Se Divya Gyana Hride Praka Chito Prema Bhakti Jahoite Avidya Vinasa Jate Vede Gai Jahara Charito this is our process. Shri Guru Charane Rati Ese Gati. This leads us to the highest destination. Our Gurudev, I remember when he would travel and preach and how the devotees developed friendship that felt that we felt Gurudev is my dear friend. In Sanskrit, he was given the name Bhakta Bandada, which means very dear friend. Guru is the dear friend of Krishna. This is the meaning of Bhakta Bandha. Krishna says the Pure devotee is my friend, my best friend, and then he is the friend of the whole world. So we should remember, Guru is my, Gurudev is our friend. Not only our teacher, but our closest friend, the friend of our Atma, and who is offering us a good friend is someone who has no nature to cheat. That means Guru ultimately is offering you to Krishna. He's not taking you for himself. Our Gurudev would come and say, I'm not asking for any wealth. I'm not asking for anything. Please lend me your ear. And ultimately, I'm helping you understand the beauty, the sweetness, the glory of Sri Krishna, and that you can offer your heart as a flower to Sri Krishna. Then you can be happy. Our Gurudev would say there are endless problems in this world, like waves in an ocean. You may think I will solve this problem, but behind it, 20 are waiting to come. So ultimately, he said, the best way to solve all problems, you learn to fly. <laughs> Spiritual life, that means learn to transcend these problems by the simple method of Harir Nam, Harir Nam, Harir Nam, Eva Kevalam. You chant the names of Krishna. But also it said in Sastra, Koti Janma Jadi Shravana Kirtan Tabutuna Pai Krishna Pare Premadan. You may chant for lifetimes and still not achieve the lotus feet of Krishna and transcend samsara. Therefore, along with Harinam, it said Sadhu Sangha. And understand Sadhu Sangha, not just to gather together, but to develop that affection for devotees. They are my true friends. All God brothers, all God sisters, all our spiritual family, they are our very dear friends. Atma Bandhu, friend of our Atma. So we'll hear some pastimes of Srila Gurudev. He was born on Moni Amavasya, the dark moon night. From his infancy, he had so much taste in bhakti. People could not understand. His parents would try to feed him. He would not take even breast milk. 
until she gave him Charnamrita. They would find because they were Sri Vaishnavs, his parents, Maleshwarnath and uh, Tiwari. They were in the Ramanandi Sampradaya, Sri Vaishnavs. Gurudev, since he was a baby, he would only take Krishna Prasad. This is one of the symptoms of a great devotee. From childhood, he was interested. I would say one of the greatest things Gurudev taught us was the importance of Harikata. So from his childhood, he only had taste in hearing Harikata and in taking Prasad, Sadhu Sangha. From childhood, he would hear his father speak Bhagavatam, his father, his grandfather, Dhyan Chandra Tiwari, would take him on his shoulders and they would go to wherever Bhagavat Kata was going on, whether, wherever Ram Kata was going on. And Gurudev would sit, even as a baby, two years old, for many hours. Sometimes Ram Kata goes on how long, Mataji? Six hours, 10 hours, 12 hours. If someone is reading, we'll see, how many? 24 hours, Ram Shadit Manas, Chobis Kantalakta, 24 hours. So in 24-hour program, people take a break, they get up, they go, they fall asleep, even in a one-hour program, two, three-hour program. But Gurudev, six hours, seven hours, he would sit with great attention and hear kata, and he would weep. And sometimes his father or grandfather would say, let us go home early, and he would always start crying. If you would try to take him home, Gurudev would start crying. They would say, okay, sit till the kata is finished. Nowadays, if you take away a child's mobile phone, then they'll start crying. Right? But Gurudev, without Krishna Katha, Ram Katha, he would weep. Every day, Gurudev would go and bathe in the Ganga. They lived nearby the Ganga. And from childhood, he had so much attachment to hearing Katha and worshipping Takaji. When he was a little boy, he would go to school and he would teach the students Bhagavad Gita. And uh, this uh, Ram Charit Manas, he would sing Sundarakand. Before starting his studies, he would say, no, let us sing Sundarakand. And they would sit with all the students and they would sing. Or they would read every day Bhagavad Gita 12th chapter Bhakti Yoga. Every day. The teacher would say, you should focus on your studies. And he would say, Jodavidya Jata, material knowledge is... Useful for some things, yes? Those who are going to school, study hard, get good grades, it's useful. Much better than not having any knowledge. But without spiritual knowledge, what is the use of material knowledge? So Gurudev would say, first, diet is spiritual knowledge. When you wake up in the morning, the first words you should say are spiritual names. Krishna, Ram, Shiradha, Srila Gurudev. First words you speak should be transcendental. Then you speak any ordinary words. First thing you eat should be Krishna Prashad or Charnamrita. Then you take anything else. Right? So Gurudev said, first thing is spiritual knowledge. Because this relates to the Atma. And without developing the Atma as a human being, we are no better than what? Dharme nahina pashubi shamana. Ahar nidra bhaya So, Gurudev taught this from his childhood to the schoolboys. He was a very expert athlete. Gurudev said this himself in his lectures. Gurudev was a very expert athlete. He, Gurudev would say, if anyone was fighting, uh, racing against me, they were racing for second place. They were racing for silver, not gold. Not only racing, but long jump, high jump. Gurudev was very athletic. Gurudev would say, when he did the long jump, he would say, Jai Hanuman! He would have his uh, school team. They would go to Buxar Bihar and they would have a team. And anywhere they would go to different competitions, they would all jump and say, come on, Jai Shiram! Jai Hanuman, right. What would they say? Come on, let's, let's hear some life. Let's one more time. Jai Hanuman! One more time, you can say. I'll say, then you say. Jai Hanuman. Jai Hanuman. That's it. Jai Hanuman. Jai Hanuman. So Gurudev would say, Jai Hanuman and jump. Like he was crossing the ocean. And people would think, wow, such a great personality. And he would run and race very fast. So Gurudev was very 
intelligent, very educated, and he had great taste. In childhood, Gurudev said he would always get first marks in everything. And he would study Sanskrit. And actually, when he was still a young man, after he passed his regular education, the British were looking for police officers. Those who, are, those who passed the highest marks in school, you know, you get in the scholarship program. But they had to know English. And Gurudev learned Sanskrit and Sastra, but he wasn't so interested in English. English is not part of Martic language, transcendental language. It's useful language. But Gurudev was mostly interested in Paramartha, transcendental language. So he had an interview to become a police officer and he had to know English, but he only knew it a little bit. Gurudev described like this. So he was sitting with the officer, supervisor, and the person said, what is your name? And he said, what is your name? He said, where are you from? And he repeated him. That's what he knew. He said, where are you from? Didn't know what it meant, but he said it very confidently. If you don't know what you're doing, just be confident. And people will think you know very well. It's the secret in life, okay? Life hack. If you don't know anything, just be confident. <laughs> Where are you from? Grenade was tall and strong, very athletic. So he had this dialogue. And then the person finally called in his superior officer. And they went and talked about it. He said, you know, he's very confident, very intelligent, great athlete. A little bit of an attitude, though. <laughs> So they thought about it and they selected him and he became a police officer. This is, he was born in uh, 1921, right? Yes. So then he became police officer and actually he was very expert at his job. Very expert. But like devotees, you know, how, no matter how expert you are, if there's a nice program somewhere, You'll call in sick or you make some excuse. In this world, material people think the most important thing is work. That's the most important thing in life. Yes, especially in New York. You have to keep the debt collectors at bay. So work is important. Yes, no problem. Work is important. This is dharma. Do your duty. But sometimes Gurudev would make some excuse and go to any satsanga. There's a story Gurudev would tell that one time there was Ram Katha going on and Gurudev had great affection for Ram. Gurudev said himself, you can watch the video. He said, when I was a child, I had so much attachment to Lord Ram. One time I was resting in Lord Ram, Sita, Lakshman, Hanuman, everyone came and blessed me, gave me their darshan. And Gurudev said regularly I would receive their darshan. He was very attached. So he would go wherever there was Ram Katha. He would say, oh, I am going on some duty for my work. But then he would go to Ram Katha. And he thought, there's a six, seven hour Ram Katha. But I'll just go for a little bit and then report to my job. So he had to do a night shift. And he went to the Katha. And he became so absorbed in Hari Katha, Lord Ram, that he lost track of time. And after Katha was finished, six, seven hours later, he realized, oh, I was supposed to be at work. It ever happened to anyone here? Not really, huh? <laughs> so then the, it was already too late. So next morning he went into his office and he was called to the supervisor's office. He went to the police headquarters. And he said, hey, I have to come to the office. So he sat down and there was the superintendent of police. And he asked him, you were at your night shift. Last night, I went to check in the post because at that time there was some unrest in India for independence. So it was very important to be vigilant. And he said, I was going around and looking and many of the people on watch were asleep. Many of them were sleeping. But I went and I saw you and you were very alert. I saw you from a distance and you're walking back and forth at your post, very alert. And I'm very happy with you and I'm going to give you a promotion. Gurudev smiled and thought to see what is the nature of Bhagavan. 
If anyone has attachment to hearing Harikata, attachment to Guru and Krishna, then Krishna can do anything. Krishna is Yogeshwara. Gurudev would teach this, tell this story. He has so much attachment to spiritual life that even if his work would suffer, he would think, oh, I must practice bhakti. We heard this story again yesterday from Mahabharipur. He said, Krishna will always take care of you if you develop attachment to his lotus feet. Yoga kshema vaham yaham. But you must be tesham satta yuktanam. If you are firmly attached to Krishna and meditating on Sri Krishna, he will maintain and protect. And Gurudev saw this in his own life. The power of Harikata. We think Harikata is just some simple program, Dharma Anustan, Satsanga, but there's a transcendental potency there. That the name of Krishna and Krishna are one, and Sarva Shakti is all Krishna's potency is in his name. And by hearing Harikata with Krishna's name and his glories and his pastimes, Krishna is present, all the Vrajabhasis are present, and their potency comes into us. And by that, we can develop attachment to Krishna. Therefore, it's said in Sastra, Tavad karmani kurvita na nirvidyeta yavata matkata shravanado vaishraddha yavan najayate. You can go on performing karma for millions of lifetimes, fruit of work. But if you develop attraction to hearing about Krishna from sadhus, then this leads you to liberation and to Krishna's lotus feet. So this is the most powerful thing. So Gurudev in his life, he showed us the importance of Harikata and Krishna Nam. So another time, Gurudev told the story that one time the British head office sent a message to a telegram to Buksar Bihar, where Gurudev head office was. And from Calcutta or whatever area, they sent a message that we're looking for a special file from 15 years ago. And the British governor was going to come and he needed this file. So at that time, they had no, you know, nowadays computer system where you can search any file. Their computer system was a storehouse of stacks of files. And they were searching day and night for this file. They couldn't find it. And then they were lamenting because if you didn't find the file, the British government was going to come and who knows, fire them, punish them, who knows. So they all went to Gurudev. His name is Narayan Tiwari. They said, dear Narayan Tiwari ji, we know you have special shakti, special power. Please help us find this file. And he said, you should have faith in the name of God. And God is your protector. And he said, let us all together chant the name Sri Ram. Okay, everybody can chant. He said, everyone together will chant in the whole office. So you imagine all of us are police officers in India in 1938, 40, like that. All right. And Gurudev said, close your eyes and we'll go and chant Ram. Everybody. Ram, 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 Ram. And Gurudev said, close his eyes, and they were chanting Ram, Ram, and they're in the file room. Tens of thousands of files. And Gurudev went and put his hand and looked through the cabinet and pulled out a file. And they're saying Ram, Ram, Ram. And they opened the file and he showed it to the officer and said, Wow. This is the file. So in life, you know, we try by our own effort so hard to do things. But the most powerful thing is faith and the name of Krishna or the name of Ram. You chant with faith. Sometimes people lose things, you know, and you have a Hanuman mantra. If you chant that mantra and pray to Hanuman, very quickly you, you find it. I've seen this in my own life many times. Anyone else has seen that? Mataji, you know, it's not Prabhuji knows. There's a special mantra you chant to Hanuman if you lost something, like Lord Ram. Sita Devi was lost. Hanuman found. So Hanuman has that city, that power that he can find with anything that's lost. So you can look for something forever and not find it. But by the faith in the name and chanting, you can easily find it. In Ram Charit Manas, there's the story of Tulsidas. How to see Krishna, how to see Ram. Tulsidas received the mercy of Tulsi Devi. And then he went to, found Hanuman actually, he got darshan of Hanuman, it's a long story. And Hanuman said, go to Chitragut, go to the bathing area. And on that special night, Ram will come and give him Chandan. But he still could not see Ram. And he went back to Hanuman and prayed, Hanuman, how can I see Ram? 
He said, oh, Hanuman gave him blessings and idea how to see Ram. So Hanuman is Guru and he'll show you how to see Krishna. Guru will teach you how to see Krishna. And so by Hanuman's mercy, he saw Lord Ram. So in the same way, without Guru's mercy, how can we see Krishna? So Gurudev showed us this in his life. So Gurudev started to develop detachment from work very early on. He wasn't so interested in his job. Also, he didn't like that he was working for the British in India. This was like, you know, sometimes you do a job that you don't like because it pays the bills. Anyone ever experienced that? Anyone? Nobody, huh? Everybody loves their job, I know. Everyone loves it to death. But Gurudev liked his job, didn't love it, but he liked it because any salary he got, he went and would give it to his father. He would go back home two times a month and give all his salary to his father. And his father would say, no, this is for you. He said, me and you, what is the difference? You are my father. Anything you think I need or I need for maintenance, you can give me back. Now it's your prashat. This is Vedic culture. Gurudev would say nowadays, he spoke about this many times in public lectures. He'd say nowadays there's many advances in society, technology, medicine, transportation, communication. But one thing is lacking, and that is love. He said, love is diminishing. He said before, husband, wife wouldn't have separate bank accounts. Everyone would have natural love and trust. He said, we see that diminishing now because of too much attachment to things, but not so much attachment and love and service of people. People love their things more than the people that are closest to them. Sometimes it's seen. So Guru, they would say, Love is the most important thing. So he would take all his salary to his father, but he didn't have so much taste. And anytime there was sadhu sangha, harikata, he would want to go and hear. We'll see how much we can get through tonight, okay? So one time, some sadhus were traveling and preaching. And actually, the British were suspicious of sadhus because they thought maybe they were making some civil unrest, preaching against India, uh, against the British rule. Swatantra, they're preaching for independence. but. Some sadhus may do this. Nowadays, there's not so much distinction. They are sadhu or they are politician. Actually, these are separate things. Nowadays, it's very popular. Oh, they are sadhu, but really they're a politician. You know, oh, just because we wear saffron, we are sadhu. But what is their intention? Mostly politics. But these sadhus who are coming, this is not our Gaudiya Vaishnavs. Bhakti Siddhanta Prabhupada was not a politician. Subhash Chandra Bosch came to him and said, we should fight for independence of India first, then practice spiritual life. And he told him, in your next life, what if you are born in Britain? Will you fight for the independence of India? Or will you fight for the British? You're always thinking the British, the British, the British. Next life, you're going to be born in Britain and you'll be fighting for Britain, Britain, Britain. Against India. Why? Only because of your material attachment. So he said, first, we should have real freedom. Freedom from Maya. So our Vaishnavas were like that. So Gurudev was very happy and he went and heard from these sadhus. Narathama Nanda Brahmachari would speak Bhagavatam and travel. So Gurudev would go and hear from him for many days, five, six days. And all day, they, he would have three, four hours kata, kirtan. But then in the evening time, he would hear more Harikata, like Mahaprabhu and Rupa Goswami, like Mahaprabhu and Ramananda Roy, or Mahaprabhu and other sadhus. Gurudev was so attached to hearing and speaking, they would discuss for many hours. And Gurudev in his heart, that desire for Krishna became more and more strong. Actually, that's the qualification for renunciation. You're not qualified to renounce this world if you don't have real attachment for Harikata and for Guru and Krishna. So Gurudev developed this attachment. He began to think, how can I escape the shackles of material life? And he would think about it. And he would think, how can I give up this job? At that time, Gurudev had started a family by his parents' desire and instruction. Gurudev had started a family, but he had no attachment, no desire, like Raghunath Das Goswami. He was always thinking, how can I leave? Is this a good thing or bad thing? <laughs> it's a difficult thing. <laughs> but Krishna is our family. Krishna is Sangsar Koro. If your family is based on Krishna, Krishna is the center, then everything is good. But Gurudev in his heart, he had a spiritual mission. When he was a young boy, his, an astrologer and guru of his family had told his parents, 
that this boy will be a chakravarti. On his fingers, he had 10 chakras. That means very transcendental personality and many other symbols of a liberated soul. So his parents, Guru, had said he will be a chakravarti, but he saw he will also be a sannyasi, a tyagi, but he didn't tell them. They would become sad. No one wants to hear. Everyone's, oh, my son will be a pundit, no problem. Some, son will be a guru, no problem. But son will be a tyagi, big problem. Right? So he didn't tell the parents, but Gurudev had that in his heart. So anyhow, when he met this brahmachari, Narada Mananda, he said, oh, he developed some affection for him. He said, where are you coming from? Navadvip. At that time, Gurudev started to read about Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in history books. And then he, one sadhu came to his village and he gave him a Hindi book about Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And Gurudev began to read that. And he, he had a correspondence with Narada Mananda Brahmachari. And from him, he heard about Param Gurudev Shila Bhakti Pradigaya and Keshav Goswami Maharaj. So one day he thought, anyhow, I'll go and meet them. I will go and meet. He didn't know what would happen. Sometimes we don't know what will happen in life, but we have to follow our heart. This is a lesson also. Follow your heart. Depends on what it's telling you though. <laughs> follow your parents, okay? <laughs> don't follow your heart. Follow your parents, all right? Promise? Once you're your own adult, then you can think about following your heart. But if your heart is telling you, develop love for God, then you ask your parents for help and support. No problem. But Gurudev at that time, he was following his heart. He took one suitcase and he was dressed in a beautiful white suit. As a, you know, he had been given promotions a few times. So one night, one day, he left. He, told, he took some leave from work. And taking his suitcase, one suitcase, he took the train to Navadvip without telling anyone. He didn't even tell the mutt that he was coming because correspondence takes time. You write a letter, you get back a message in a few weeks, who knows? It's not like nowadays. You know, WhatsApp, boom, boom. So Gurudev packed his bag and he got on the train and he arrived late at night in Navadvip. And when he arrived at the station, he asked, where is the mutt? Where's the Gaudiya Mat? At that time, those who know, Navadvip, there are many Mats. So the people were telling him which Mat. And it was late at night. And so he was speaking with the supervisor of the station. And at that time, Param Gurudev Shila Bhakti Pragan Kesha Gosaya Maharaj. Oof, not so much time. Time is running away from us. All right, we'll keep going a little bit. Yes? So Bhakti Brigan Keshu Goswami Maharaj was doing japa outside. They had a very simple bhajan kutir, not a big temple, Navadvip, simple courtyard. And he sent his sevak, Sajan Sevak, later became Bhakti Vedanta Vami Goswami Maharaj. And he said, please go to the train station. Someone is coming. Someone very dear to me is coming. He had no idea, no letter, but there was spiritual correspondence, atma correspondence, letter from your atma. If you have relation with Guru, you can write in your heart and write on paper and offer it. Guru is transcendental. Krishna is transcendental. And they accept your prayer, your vandanam. So Gurudev was coming to meet Param Gurudev. And Param Gurudev was waiting to meet Gurudev, both sides. This is affection. So Param Gurudev was doing japa and he sent Sajan Sevak. And Sajan Sevak went with a lantern. And at the station, Navadvip, he was calling out. Param Gurudev said, one Narayan Tiwari is coming. So he was with his lantern and saying, Narayan Tiwari, Kon hai, Narayan Tiwari, Narayan Tiwari. And he was walking up and down the station and Gurudev was inside the office and he heard his name called and he came out and saw Sajan Sevak, his very dear friend, very dear brother. They became intimate friends. Sajan Sevak offered him respect, distinguished gentleman, police officer. Gurudev offered respect to Sajan Sevak and together they went to Param Gurudev. And when Gurudev arrived, you can imagine nighttime, but beautiful moonlight, beautiful courtyard. And Gurudev offered his Sastang Pranam, prostrate obeisances. And Param Gurudev lifted him up and embraced him. And they wept. Ecstasy. Why? They have transcendental relation, spiritual relation. They had a very, very sweet connection at once. And Gurudev immediately forgot all his past life. My job, family, home, 
He thought, now I'm just joining the mutt, joining the temple. Param Gurudev gave him a little room and he surrendered. He said, please accept me. This was in the winter time, 1946. <clears throat> so Gurudev started to stay there. And Param Gurudev would say, oh, you should go home for some time. No, he wouldn't say that. But he would ask, do you want to go home? He said, oh, now I'm home. At your lotus feet, I am really home. Every day, Gurudev would go to the Ganga and bring water for Param Gurudev's bath and for service in the temple. And he immediately began doing seva. This is also important in life. Only studying, studying, studying without seva doesn't develop some bandha, relationship. Seva develops relationship. And it's natural. You have a natural, if you have love for someone, you want to serve. If you have love for Krishna, you want to cook for Krishna, make garlands for Krishna, dress Krishna. This is the nature of Srimati Radhika, Surup Shakti, the Lord's potency is seva. So Gurudev immediately began doing seva. We work so hard to serve ourselves, buy ourselves clothes, wash our clothes, arrange food for ourselves, eat food. We're always doing seva, but mostly out of selfishness. But bhakti means love for Krishna, love for sadhu, and then service of Krishna, service of sadhus. So Gurudev began this. So we have 60 more years to cover. <laughs> so we might have to do a to be continued at some point, but maybe 15 minutes. Okay. It's very difficult. So Gurudev stayed for some months in Navadweep, and the time of Gaur Purnima came, the appearance of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And he prayed to his Guru Maharaj for initiation. Initiation is an important part of spiritual life because it's a family connection at that point. Without initiation, we are just flirting with Guru and flirting with Krishna. <laughs> initiation means sambandha, fixed relationship, right? So he said, prayed to Param Gurudev, please accept me, give me mantra initiation. Param Gurudev said, okay, on Gorpanima day, but you must shave your head and your beard and your mustache. And Gurudev said, he accepted, that he would shave his head, his beard, but he wanted to keep his mustache, <laughs> Gurudev would say. Why? He had a very nice mustache. And also it means, you know, in Bihar that you have your father. No mustache, that means father's nityadam ichalagya, gone. So he said, I'll shave my beard, shave my head, but I must keep my mustache. And Param Gurudev would say that you're ready to give up everything, but you'll keep this. Think about it. He said, if you want mantra, you must be prepared to shave your mustache. Very nice mustache. So Gurudev thought for a few minutes and said, okay. So Gurudev shaved. And in the morning time, after bathing in the Ganga, took mantra initiation, Brahma Gayatri, Guru Gayatri, Kam Gayatri, Gopal Mantra, and so forth. That evening they had big Sankirtan. When Gurudev was still at home before, he had started becoming very inquisitive about Gaur Nityananda. And he was always studying the life and teachings of Lord Chaitanya and Lord Nityananda. And one time he had a dream of Ram and Lakshman coming to him and then appearing in a golden form, dancing in Sankirtan. And they said, come. Ram, Lakshman then again appeared and said, come to us. Now in this age, we have appeared in Navadvip Dham, Mayapur Dham as Gaur Nityananda. So Gurudev developed att attraction and detachment and he came to Navadvip. And on that evening, Gaur Pranima, they were all dancing in Sankirtan, Param Gurudev, Gurudev, hundreds of devotees. And in the midst of that dance, Gurudev had this transcendental darshan of Satinandan Gaur Hari, Nityananda Prabhu. And he began to experience transcendental ecstasy and he fainted on the ground. He was weeping and weeping. This is the power of darshan of Krishna or Lord Nityananda, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And he realized the potency of Guru's Shakti, Guru's mercy. That's why we sang before the class, Guru Kripa Vina Nahi Koi Sadhana Bal. Without Guru's mercy, our sadhana, our practice has no strength. And Krishna Kripa Ki Ananda Murti. Guru is the form of bliss and the form of Krishna's mercy. Bhajaman, bhaja anukshan. Therefore, you should develop this focus and attachment. 
So Gurudev, by the mercy of Param Gurudev, that family relationship became established. This is the process of mantra. When we receive mantra, then Guru says, Achuta Gotrasya Amukadasaha. That now you are in Krishna's family line because of Krishna mantra. And we see this in all Ved Sastra. So Gurudev began to serve in the temple. They would go on bhiksha. They would go on prachar, preaching. He would do all services. For a sadhu, for brahmachari, every service is your service. Cleaning pots, speaking harikata, fixing shoes, begging, everything. One time Gurudev was out begging with an older Baba. And they came to a village where some fake sadhus had come. This is also there, right? In, in this world. Fake sadhu. Why? You think, oh, I, I don't know how to work. So I'll put on saffron and go and beg. <laughs> Biksham Dehi. Like Indra. Indra put on sannyas garb and went and begged. And Ravan also. So this tradition is there also. This is also part of our itihas. So some fake sadhus had come and stolen from that village. And so they were very angry. And when they saw Gurudev come with another sadhu sometime after, they thought, chore, thief. And they captured them and put them in a room and locked them there. And then they called the police and said, we're going to beat you, punish you. And they were sitting in the room for some hours. And the elder Baba was shivering and very afraid. What will happen? What will happen? I'm old. If I'm beaten, will I even live? And Gurudev was peacefully chanting, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. So when the police came, all the villagers had gathered around. They had been locked in a room for their own protection also. <laughs> so all the villagers wanted to beat them. The police came and they called the village leader and they opened the door and went inside. And Gurudev stood up, very tall, very effulgent, very aristocratic, very beautiful. And they said, what is your name? And he said, Narayan Tiwari. And the head police officer said, Narayan Tiwari. Narayan Tiwari. The Narayan Tiwari. <laughs> Gurudev was a very famous police officer before he became sadhu, before he renounced the world. So they recognized, oh, you are the Narayan Tiwari. At that time, he was one of the top policemen in Orissa, Bengal, Bihar, that three-state area. So they were saying, oh, and now you become sadhu, sannyasi. How glorious. And they offered him pranam and they told the villagers, he is not an ordinary person. He left a very high post, very wealthy salary. You can imagine, one of the top positions in Orissa, Bihar and Bengal. And he gave up everything to serve Bhagavan. You should offer him pranam and give some donation. So that whole village, they gathered whatever vegetables they were doing bhiksha for. Mahaprabhu's dham, Gaur Pranima. They would feed. People think sadhus are collecting for themselves. But they're giving up all their own happiness and comfort for the service of others. There's a verse Bhakti Thakur sings. Jivana nirvahe ane uddegana dive para upakar nija sukha prasadiba. This is the nature of a sadhu. In the, their life, they don't cause distress to anyone. They give up their own comfort and happiness for the service of others. So Gurudev from a very aristocratic position... He was begging village to village for some simple alms, grains of rice, some vegetables, and they would bring everything back to Navadweep. And then on Gorpanima, for one week, they would feed thousands of people, 10,000 people. They would cook, where they would arrange the pandals, put up the pandals. They would serve 16, 17 hours a day after doing bhiksha for many months. They were so humble. So everyone gave, and many people from that village came to Navadweep and took shelter of Param Gurudev. This is just one story. There's hundreds of stories. One time later that summer, Gurudev was preaching and near one train station, he met his cousin. And his cousin recognized him and went and told his family. And then they all came. They said, oh, some jadu, that seems some black magic. That these bogus sadhus have done black magic on our son and brainwashed him and made him a Krishna devotee. That's what people think, right? You should be a Krishna devotee, but not too much. This is what it means, right? This is a good Hindu. Just enough, but not too much. <laughs> right? 
Just a little bhakti. But now your guru has made you pagal, mad, like Mirabai. Too much bhakti. You've left everything, so they forcibly brought him home. Param Gurudev gave permission, go back home, because he knew once there's a relationship, you cannot break that. So he knew, oh, he'll go home, but really you cannot break that. So Gurudev went home for some time, a few weeks, and he was teaching his grand, you know, the kids and his nephews and nieces, and he was helping them and everything. And one night, he thought, I must escape. So in his room, he put straw. We learned this, right, as kids. He put straw, like a straw man under his bed and put his chadar around the head and covered him in blankets and ran away. But he didn't go on the main tracks. There was a forest that was famous to be filled with ghosts. And Gurudev thought, they may discover and search for me along the train tracks. So I'll go through this forest of ghosts. And Gurudev went for many hours, the middle of the night. And the whole time he was chanting, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. And all the ghosts were chanting, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. He walked through many kilometers, many miles, then he took a train and came back to Param Gurudev and he said, let us hide somewhere. Why? They know this mat, they know this temple, they know that temple. So they went traveling so that he couldn't be found. And Gurudev had no attachment whatsoever. He thought, if I'm surrendering to Krishna, Krishna will take care of my family. 21 generations, 14 generations, seven generations, this is the Sastra. That if you offer your heart and soul to Krishna, Krishna will take care of your family more than they could ever imagine. So Gurudev had that faith and he started serving. For many years, he served Param Gurudev as his personal assistant. That time, 1948, he met Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. There's a story about that. So there's so many stories. Now I'm going to start speeding up though. Okay. 1952, Padam Gurudev wanted to give him sannyas. As well as Bhaktivedanta Trivikram Goswami Maharaj, Bhaktivedanta Vaming Goswami Maharaj. He said, I will give you sannyas. Vaming Goswami Maharaj, Trivikram Goswami Maharaj were senior. They had joined the mat first. But they were hesitating. They didn't want to take sannyas. And then Param Gurudev asked our Gurudev, at that time his name was Gornarayan, will you take sannyas? And Gurudev said, oh Guru Maharaj, I will do whatever you like. I have offered my life and soul to you. If you want to give me black cloth, saffron cloth, red cloth, or no cloth, if you tell me to just do anything, I have offered my life at your lotus feet. So Param Gurudev was very happy. And then he called Sajan Sevak and Radhanath Brahmachari, Trivikram Maharaj and Bhagavad Goswami Maharaj, and he said, your junior, Gornarayan, will take sannyas. And if you don't take, you have to offer him pranam every time you see him. <laughs> will you do it? And they did not think like that, but really they thought, oh, he will take, and Guru Maharaj desires for us to take, so we will also take. So they all took sannyas in 1952, and for the next 50 plus years, they served together as one. Three bodies, one atma, one heart. As very intimate brothers. There was never a quarrel between them. They showed the perfect example of brotherhood, like Ram, Lakshman, Bharat. What does it mean to be a brother? No ego, no pride, no what will I get, what will you get? For 50 plus years, they served together. Vaman Goswami Maharaj left later on, 2003, 2004, Trivikram Goswami Maharaj, Vaman 2005, I believe. Until that time, they never once had a quarrel. They would argue and joke. Sometimes Trivikram Goswami Maharaj and Gurudev, they would argue with each other like brothers. But then right afterwards, they would sit and eat together off the same plate. They had a very close friendship. Very close. Anything that they would collect for months preaching, because they would go different ways preaching after sannyas, different areas, different states. But they would save everything. And when they would come and meet together, they would give everything, all of their collection to the other brother. So any collection Gurudev would have, give to Vaman Goswami Maharaj. Any collection Trivikram Goswami Maharaj would have, give to Gurudev. And this way they shared everything with no doubt, complete, absolute trust and faith in each other and their service to Gurudev. So in 1954, Gurudev was given the service of managing Keshaji Gaudiya Mat and Mathura. Param Gurudev gave him that seva. And he said, you should preach and publish the Sastra from Bengali to Hindi and Preach the message of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu throughout North India. Gurudev took up that service. At that time, living in Mathura was very difficult. Now also. 
But that time, they had no money for electricity even. They had one fan in the temple, but they would not pay the electric bill. They had no money. And North India, Mathura is very hot. They would have to bring water from the Jamuna, like a kilometer away, for everything, for cooking, for cleaning. So Gurudev lived there and served since 1954 to 1996 when he started traveling in the West. 42 years. Yes? For a long time he served there. Overcoming all challenges. The temple was right next to Kamsatila. We don't have time to tell all the stories, but that's where the wrestling place where Krishna wrestled with Chanur Mustika, right there. And many people had antagonistic mood. Hey, bogus sadhu. And they would always ridicule. You would go on biksha and beg, and they would throw, them at, throw things at you. Oh, you want vegetables? Take it. They would throw rotten vegetables at the sadhus. Especially Bengalis would come. And North Indians didn't like Bengalis so much. So they would, they would taunt them and ridicule them. But Gurudev tolerated, every, tolerated everything. And there in Mathura, it was a hub where all sadhus would come to go to Vrindavan. Because they had a train station there, a bus station. They didn't have a train station in Vrindavan. So from all different mats, all Gaudiya mats, they would all come in. Gurudev would serve all the sadhus from all missions. Gurudev never had this mood that this is my mission, this is your mission. Gurudev would say, we're all in one mission, the family of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Vasudeva Kutumbakan, the world is one family. Gurudev had that mood. He would say, wherever you're building up walls, I will break those walls down. Bhakti is free. Bhakti is not my family, your family, another family. Everyone is in Krishna's family. And every devotee, we should have love and affection and want to serve. So Gurudev served all the sadhus. And they would all come to Mathura, Bhakti Rakshak Shira Goswami Maharaj, Bhakti Murad Puri Goswami Maharaj, Bhakti Vaibha Puri Goswami Maharaj, Bhakti Las Tirtha Goswami Maharaj, Bhakti Sagar Maharaj, Bhakti Bhairakhanis Maharaj, all different sannyasis, Bhakti and the Prabhupada disciples would come there and Gurudev would serve everyone. And very patiently he tolerated very difficult conditions. And every year Gurudev would go on Braj Mandal Parikrama. Gurudev would say, for 60 years I did not miss Braj Mandal Parikrama. Gurudev had so much love. For the Brijabhasis and for Raj, he would go village to village barefoot for 30 days, sleeping in a different place every night. Very humbly, Gurudev would say, I've come to bring you to Vrindavan. When Gurudev came to the West, he would say, I've come to bring you to Vrindavan. Follow me to Vrindavan. In his Harikata, he would say, come with me to Vrindavan. And he would tell Krishna pastimes and bring us with him to Vrindavan. So Gurudev said, ultimately, I've come to bring you to Vrindavan in Bharat, but ultimately in Goloka. There's two places where Vrindavan is present. Vrindavan is present in India, right? Vrindavan, Braj Mandal is there. But also another place it's present is with Guru, who is Brajbasi. Radharani said, Mor man Vrindavan, my heart is Vrindavan. This is Srimati Radhika's words. Mani vani ek kori jani, that my heart is Vrindavan. So anyone who is Brijabhasi, they carry Vrindavan with them and they bring Vrindavan anywhere they go. And then they bring people to them and then they take them to Vrindavan. And then from there, they take them to Goloka Vrindavan, spiritual world in Krishna's service. So that is our great fortune that we came into contact with such a Brijabhasi sadhu. Gurudev had so much love for the Brijabhasis. He would go village to village and he knew everyone. To this day, you can go to places, all different places in Braj, and they know Srila Gurudev, Srila Bhaktivedanta Narayan Goswami Maharaj, Ter Kadam Basadu, say, oh, they will see you and they can recognize, oh, you're a disciple of Srila Bhaktivedanta Narayan Goswami Maharaj. And they'll have so much affection, they'll speak with you for a long time. Not only that, in Seva Kunj, there's a sadhu in Seva Kunj, Pujari. His name is Chandra Mohan Pujari. And this is a later pastime now, in 2008, 2009, Kartik. In Seva Kunj, that's where Radha Krishna are present every night for the Ras Lila. In Vrindavan, there's a place called Seva Kunj. Every night, Radha Krishna performing Ras Lila there. Bangsi Bhat, Seva Kunj. Every night, they're performing pastimes there. Krishna is serving Shirata. And it's described to be the most highest place in Vrindavan, Seva Kunj. So the Pujari of that place, one night he was sleeping and he was woken. There's a beautiful deity of Radharani. So he only worships Radharani there. And so at nighttime, Radharani came in his dream and she said, Oh, Chandra Mohan, we have an interview where he was speaking this story. He tells it to many people. 
And he said, oh, my Saki is present nearby. Gurudev is staying Gopinath Bhavan. So Radharani said to this Chandra Mohan, my Saki, not oh Maharaj, this, that. My Saki is present nearby. Please take my mala, my prashadi mala, remnant garland, and my prashad. And go give it to my Saki. He said, who, who Saki? Where's Saki? She said, oh, you will see him as Narayan Maharaj. <laughs> but really he is my Saki. So please give this to him. So this Sadhu then in the morning time, he took Radharani's Prashadi Mala, Chandan, Tulsi. He thought, is this a dream or not? Again, she came. Hey, I told you, go take it. So he took everything and he went, gave to Shrivat Madhav Maharaj at that time, who was there and go open up the van. He said, oh, Swamini Ji, Brishabhanu Nandini Shimati Radhika, she has directly sent me. She said, take this to my Saki, my dear associate, my dear maidservant, Manjali. And so they gave to Gurudev. He said, no, I will give to Gurudev directly. I want to see. He said, I will give to Gurudev later. Now he's busy. He said, no. Radharani gave me to give him. I will not give to anyone in between. I want to see him. You imagine if Radharani came and gave you that instruction. You want to see that person? So he directly gave this to Gurudev and they spoke very sweetly together. So this shows their relationship. Gurudev performed his beautiful pastimes in this world. But he has a transcendental relationship with Krishna, with Srimati Radhika. This is the highest class of Guru. There are three kinds of Guru. One Guru is who is in this world, both feet. But they're pointing to the spiritual world and they're going in that direction, seriously, without any deviation. And they can help guide you in that direction. First level Guru. Second level Guru, one foot in this world, one foot in that world. And they're going towards that world and they can take you along. Highest class Guru, both feet in that world. Sometimes they come and they help people go there. But mostly they're only there, always absorbed in Krishna Leela. So Gurudev was like that. All these beautiful pastimes are there, but really he is Shimati Radhika's eternal maidservant. Sri Krishna's eternal associate, Brijbasi. This is real Guru. We heard last night a beautiful story. One time when Gurudev was in Hawaii, Kona, the other side of the big island, Hilo and Kona. Gurudev in the morning time, about 10.30, he was in he was staying uh, in some nice area and he was picking grass. He was picking grass. We heard this last night directly. Mahabudipuru was there directly. So he was picking grass and he was very absorbed in it. Like in internal consciousness. And Mahabudipuru was nearby and he, after a few minutes watching Gurudev, Gurudev looked at him and he's, and recognized, you know, came a little bit to external consciousness. And then he said, oh, what are you doing, Guru Maharaj? He said, oh, Swamini Ji is asking us to collect flowers for making mala for Krishna. Swamini Ji is giving us this seva. He did not say this publicly, just to intimate devotee. Oh, we have this seva for Thakurani, Shmati Radhika. This is what the gopis are doing, manjuris are doing this time of day. Why midday pastimes are coming? So they have to pick flowers and make mala. So this is their Sambandha. Gurudev, this was in early 2000s. Gurudev is externally traveling, preaching, spreading Krishna glories, Krishna Katha, bringing people to the Dham. But really internally, he's always there. That's why Gurvastikam we sing. This is topmost Guru Mahabhagavat. Your devotee. So Gurudev was like that. Gurudev is always absorbed. Anytime he would go on his morning walk. So from 1996 to 2010, he traveled the world 32 times. World tours. Two or three times a year. And he would always go and speak Bhagavat, speak Sastra, Chaitanya Charitamrita, and all the Goswami's teachings. But really he is always present in Radha Krishna's Seva. And he taught this. He was a very rare acharya that focused on Vraja Bhakti <clears throat> and was qualified to bring us to that platform. We spoke this last night. Many people may speak about Krishna Prem, about Radha Dasyam, about Braj, about how to become Brajabasi, but do they have the potency to give it? You can only give what you have. So Gurudev is on that transcendental platform by simply offering your heart to Gurudev. Now also, Gurudev is not gone. Gurudev is present. Why? Krishna is eternal, Sadguru is eternal. 
Gurudev is present. You can pray to him and he can give you a blessing. He's give you mercy. And therefore we pray to Gurudev, please, on days like this, we pray to Gurudev, but also all the Guru Varga and all the Vrijabhasis. And if they see us observing days like this, they're very happy. All the Vrijabhasis give their blessings. Why? Shimati Radhika said, I sent her to this world to preach, to be an Acharya, to bring Jivas to Krishna. So if we don't have Shraddha, faith in Gurudev like this, then how will we develop in our spiritual life? On our own effort, we can spend lifetimes, lifetimes, and still not advance. It's very difficult. Maya is very strong. Maya is extremely powerful. Nayamatma balahine nalabhya. By your own strength, we cannot cross over Maya. But by the mercy of Sri Guru, and by developing some bandha, attachment, relationship, then very easily, Prema Bhakti Jaha Hoite Avidya Vinasa Jate. Prem Bhakti can arise and all ignorance can be dispelled. Sri Guru Karuna Sindhu Adhama Janarabhandu. Gurudev is the ocean of mercy, the friend of the fallen. Therefore, we pray, Haha Prabhu Kurudhoya Deho Moda Pada Choya. Give me shelter at your lotus feet. So, Gurudev, he preached very nicely. There's so many stories. We'll speak again tomorrow. I won't be here with you all, but. Every day I'm giving Harikata according to my service. This is my service to Gurudev. Why? Repeating his teachings. If anything I'm teaching my own, this is not bona fide. But anything we've heard from Guru Vaishnavas, anything from Sastra, is our service to speak this. This purifies ourself and this is our service. It is our Pushpanjali. Otherwise, we are Akritagya, ungrateful. So anything Gurudev has given us, it is our service to repeat. Do not be weak. Gurudev would say again and again, don't be weak. Don't be hopeless. You would say you have faith and you practice and you don't be weak and don't be hopeless. Why? If you're hopeless, it means you have no faith in Gurudev. And you think I can do everything on my own. I don't need anyone's help. But that's not life. You need your parents' help. You need society's help. You need God's help. You need Guru's help. So you have faith in Guru, faith in Krishna, then you never be hopeless. And you understand, Krishna sent Guru, Guru Brahmanda Brahmite Kon, Bhagyavana Jeev, Guru Krishna Prashade Bhai, Bhakti Lata Beach, Sate Krishna Bhajakal, Guru Sevan, Maya Jal, Chuti Pai, Shri Krishna Charan. Therefore, Guru Bhakti is the most powerful thing. Sardava Sadhana Mukyahi, Guru Seva Sadhadrata, Yaya Bhakti Rabhagavati Yanjasa Yatsukabaha. By that, Guru Bhakti and Guru Seva, very easily you can cross over the otherwise insurmountable ocean of material existence, very easily. Therefore, Krishna himself says, Pratamam tu gurum pujyam tataschayva mamarchanam kurvam siddhim avapnoti nanyatya sadhriti kachit. First, you take shelter and worship Guru. Yasya devi para bhakti rita devi tata guru tasyaiti katita yarta prakashante mahatmanaha. Krishna says, develop nishta, attachment, and faith in Guru and have the same faith in bhakti and Guru as you do in me. Then I accept you. Otherwise, who will train you? Who will help you? So therefore, we take shelter of our beloved Gurudev. He traveled the world. He preached the message of pure bhakti, of Raja Bhakti. He brought everyone to the Dham and developed their attachment to the Dham throughout the whole world. And he would always go and take shelter and glorify Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada and especially help all his disciples as a Shiksha Guru following his instruction, bringing them closer to Braj Bhakti. And he collected many flowers, many hearts, like he was in Hawaii making flowers. In Hawaii, he was picking flowers for Radharani, but actually his whole prashar was only finding those atma, those jivas whose heart would become like a flower at the feet of Sri Krishna, Srimati Radhika in their service. So this is our Gurudev's transcendental mission. People think mission means big temple, big prashar, a lot of money and followers. But Gurudev said, no, every temple is the heart of every disciple and that place should become Vrindavan. And where you always perform Nam Kirtan, Bhagavat Shravan, hearing Harikata, Sadhu Sangha, then very easily you'll cross over fierce emotion of material existence. So we are praying to our beloved Gurudev, remembering him. He has so many beautiful pastimes, unlimited pastimes. We said last night, our Uma Mataji, Uma Bhakti Maduri Uma Mataji, she would say in her articles that if all the ocean was ink, and all the land was paper or parchment. 
it would still be a not enough to glorify Gurudev. Why? Because he is taking us from Nitya Bhadat, from eternal bondage in Maya, since time immemorial, to the spiritual world, to the lotus feet of Sri Krishna. Therefore, how can we end the glorification? That's why, again and again, we are eager to hear. We sing in Ram Sarit Manas, right? Hiyai Pyasa Nabhujata Nabhujai. The more we hear, the more we desire to hear. This is how we develop in bhakti. So again and again, we're taking shelter of the lotus feet of Srila Bhakti Ran Narayana Goswami Maharaj, praying for his causeless mercy, praying to always be in the family of his devotees. Every one who has the slightest drop of love for Gurudev, they are your dear most friend. This world is filled with many people who are maybe friends, but they are not the friend of your soul unless they are themselves on the platform of the Atma. But anyone who has the shred, tiny, tiny speck of love for Gurudev, tiny speck of faith in Gurudev, they are our real friend in this world. So they are all Gurudev's murti. Why Gurudev is present? Anyone Gurudev gives mantra to, Gurudev is situated in their heart. Gurudev is present in their hearts. So you offer pranam to each other and develop affection. You are my family. Family may quarrel, but they're still family. Family is a very powerful thing. So we pray to always have affection with our spiritual family. And in this way, we can very happily practice bhakti or anyhow practice bhakti and go to the spiritual world. Hari Hari Vo, Shri Gurudev Ki Jai, Shri Swami Prabhupada Ki Jai, Samastha Rupanu Gauri Guru Varga Ki Jai, Saparsha Gaur Hari Ki Jai, Nidai Gaur Pramanande Hari Hari Vo.